Number 64, letter A. Use the distance and velocity data in figure 3.62 to find the rate of expansion as a function of distance. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is let's take a look at this data over here, all right? So what they tell us is that they tell us uh, that for let's say galaxy one, right, it's moving away relative to galaxy three at a certain velocity. And it is also a certain uh, distance away. The MLY stands for million light years. All right, so what we need to do is somehow we have to find this rate of expansion, meaning how fast these galaxies like galaxy two and galaxy one are moving away uh, from galaxy three as a function of their distance. So how I can think about this is I can maybe try by doing a simple ratio, all right? So we can maybe find something like this, something that the, I'll call it the rate sub E, so rate of expansion. Maybe that'll be something like, I don't know, the velocity, let's say of that particular galaxy divided by the uh, distance that that galaxy is from, let's say galaxy three. So if I were to consider that, right, let me take this first, uh, let, let me take galaxy two as our first case. So what that would mean is that this would be negative 2200 right, kilometers per second. And that would then be divided by the 150 million light years, 150 million light years. And what do we get if we were to divide the two? So we get negative 2200 over 150. All right, so we get negative 14.7 or so, right? So 14.7, and that's negative. The only reason, remember, why it's negative is because it's moving to the left relative to galaxy three. So this would be kilometers per second per million light years. Okay, let's do it for another one. Maybe number four, right? So let's do it, the velocity of number four divided by the distance of number four. So this would be now 2830 all over 190 now, right? Kilometers, that's kilometers per second over the million light years. And when I do the math there, we get 2830 divided by uh, 190. So we get 14.9 or so, right? 14.9. Okay, slightly different, but it looks very similar, right? So I'm gonna kilometers per second, right, per a million light years. So I'm gonna do the same thing for let's say galaxy one and then galaxy five, all right? So let me say that this was number two, this was number four. Let's do now for galaxy uh, number one. And I'm just gonna plug it in, I'm not gonna write it all out. So it's just gonna be negative 4,500 all over 300. So that works out to be negative 15. Okay, kilometers per second per million light years. And then I'll do the last one, number five. And we get 6,700 divided by 450. And that works out to be 14.9, 14.9. So what I'll do from here now, so they're all slightly different, but they're pretty much uh, constant, right? What I'll do now is I'll take the average of all of these. Now in terms of average, let's just use the absolute value, all right, because um, these are relative, all right, terms, meaning the negative signs and the positive. So let's just get rid of the negative signs for now. All right, let's just find the average. So let's add the four up. So we got 14.7 plus 14.9 plus 15 plus 14.9. Uh, and then simply just divide it by four. So the average looks like it's about 14.9. So let's use that number, okay? So we get the average the average rate of expansion is going to equal 14.9 kilometers per second per million light years. Okay, so this is now the value we're going to use to help us now solve uh, part B. Now this is, this is the function, okay, that gives us the rate of expansion, right? So this is the rate at which the um, galaxies are expanding, right, per distance or million light year. Okay, that's a measure of distance. So now for B, it says if you extrapolate back in time, how long ago would all the galaxies have been approximately at the same position, the two parts? Okay, so basically what this is asking us to do, okay, in other words, let me reframe the question, all right? Let's say 
uh, the galaxies are moving away, which they are, at a rate of 14.9 kilometers per second. And I ask you, given this rate of expansion, how long would it take, would it take to travel one million light years? That's the question. Now, how would you think to do that? Well, first you'd say, I could do that, right? It's basically just a V equals equal, is equal to D over T, right? If I want to solve for T, I need to know the velocity, which we do here, and I need to know the distance, which we actually do. The distance is the million light years, okay? But in order to remember, use this formula, you have to be consistent in your, in, uh, your units. I have units of kilometers here, but these are units of light years. So I have to do a conversion, right? So let's do that. So basically a light year is the uh, distance that light travels in one year. Okay, so let's start with a simple rate first. So we have, we know light travels at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Okay, that is the speed of light. Now let's see how far it would travel in one year. So basically I just got to convert my seconds here to years. Okay, so in order to do that, seconds on top, minutes on the bottom, 60 seconds in one, oh, 60 seconds in one minute. The seconds cancel. Now I got to get rid of minutes. Right, so I'm going to go to hours. So I got 60 minutes in an hour. So the minutes will cancel. Then I got hours. So now hours on the top, maybe days on the bottom, right? I know that there's 24 hours in a day. Then 365, let's call it 0.25. Okay. Yeah, that's technically what it is. Yeah, let's do it anyway. Uh, days in one year. Okay, so this now would give me the uh, the distance of a light year. So 3 times 10 to the 8 times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365.25. So we get a value of 4 point, excuse me, 9.47, right, times 10 to the 15. This is meters. Okay, per now year. All right, but remember the definition of a light year is the distance light travels in one year. So what I'm going to do here, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to get rid of this denominator. So let's just let's just pretend it is just. I mean, not pretend, but let's just call it that. This is one light year. Okay, this distance. Okay, great. But now it's not per one light year; it's per one million of them. So what do we have to do? Simply multiply this now by 10 to the 6 to represent a million light years. All right, so times 10 raised to the 6. So we simply just add the exponents. So we get 9.47 times 10 to the 21 now meters, right? Or million meters, that is. Okay. But I'll just leave it in meters. So this is good. Now here's my distance, okay? This is the numerator. Now here, the numerator, or I should say the velocity distance value is in kilometers. So I can do one of two things, either convert this unit to kilometers or convert this unit into meters, it doesn't matter. It might just be easier to convert this boxed value, right, to kilometers. So when I do so, I have to divide this, right, if you think about it, it's meter on the bottom, kilometer on the top, 1,000 meters, one kilometer, that cancels. So basically just divide the value by 1,000, okay? So divide by 1,000. So at a value of 9.47 times 10 to the 18. All right, so let's start plugging it in now. So this is 14.9, that's in kilometers per second. Then I just calculated the value of 9.47 times 10 to the 18, that's in kilometers, so we're good, divided by time. Now remember that the time you calculate here will simply be in seconds. So just do a cross multiplication and then divide. So it's going to be 9.47 times 10 to the 18 divided by 14.9. And we get a value of 6.35 times 10 to the 17 seconds. 
So that's the time. That's This is the time it would have taken to travel 1 million light years if the rate of travel was 14.9 kilometers per second. So essentially, this is how long it took uh, from the Big Bang. Now, that's fine. That's an answer. But we usually, we probably want to frame it in years, right? Because we might be asking ourselves, what, what a, how long is that, right? Even though we have a time, we're not used to giving it in seconds. So let's put it in terms of years. So how do we do that? So we just got to do a conversion, right? So let me see if I can, I'm going to do it on the top. So nine, so sorry. So we got 6.35 times 10 to the 17 seconds. Now, seconds on the bottom, minutes on the top. One minute for 60 seconds, right? It's basically the same conversion as we did before, just now opposite. Minutes in an hour, so the 60 minutes in an hour. Then hours to days, 24 hours in a day. And then finally, 365 days in one year. And that goes away. So this will now tell us how many years it would take. So 6.35 times 10 to the 17 divided by all of this, 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. And there it is. So we get a value of approximately 2, 2.01 times 10 to the 10 years. In other words, it would be about 20 million, excuse me, not million, 20 billion years. Okay. All right. That's the age of the universe, guys, approximately. So thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you in the next lesson.